My name is John Mulhall. I'm a urologist and I specialize in sexual and reproductive medicine. And I'm the director of the sexual and reproductive medicine program in the Division of Urology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Dr. Mulhall, you are a specialist in urology who has chosen to subspecialize in erectile function. Do you think we overtreat prostate cancer? Well, I think it's very important to understand who you're talking to. I'm a urologist, but I'm board certified in urology, but really my practice is very limited. So I wouldn't feel comfortable talking to you about uh, prostate cancer, uh, its screening, its diagnosis, or its treatment. What I can tell you is that all prostate cancer therapies have a significant negative impact on a man's sexual health, and some do that temporarily, and many do it in the long term. What do you believe that a newly diagnosed patient should understand about erectile function today so that he makes good decisions both before and after treatment that are appropriate for his circumstances? So I think first and foremost, they need to understand that for the vast majority of those patients, there's not a huge urgency in pulling the trigger on deciding which treatment is right for them. And I think they need to go into information gathering mode and they need to inform themselves. And there are a variety of ways to do that. I think you have to be cautious which internet websites you go to to gain information. But there are books out there written by oncologists and written by people like me which really delineate uh, what the pros and cons and risks and benefits are of the various treatments. I think patients need to be proactive. Patients generally think that a physician will tell them everything they need to hear when in fact that's not often the case. Limitations of time in the office, etc. So I think they need to go in armed with a series of questions. And I think if those questions can't be answered in one 20-minute session with a physician, they should expect that they may need to go back a second time or a third time to get all of their questions answered. At Memorial Sloan Kettering, where you work, what percentage of patients do you think you get to see before they are treated? In other words, how often are patients getting guidance from an expert about erectile function prior to treatment? So about 15% of our patients come to see us before radical prostatectomy, and that figure has doubled in three years. So the message is getting out to the prostatectomists that patients benefit from coming to see somebody like me before treatment. And the way they benefit is in several, several ways, but they get realistic expectations. And you heard me talk about that when I gave the lecture this morning, is that I tell them what to expect. I give them a sense of optimism that we can do really good things to protect their long-term sexual function. We prefer to see patients before or after surgery with their partner because I can do what I do for a man's erections, but if he doesn't have a supportive partner and a willing partner who's engaged in the whole rehabilitation concept, then it's gonna make it more difficult for him to have a successful outcome. Do you have a specific protocol in place at MSKCC that encourages patients to be well informed about erectile function issues prior to making treatment decisions based on reliable data? So we have a very formally structured penile rehabilitation program which is changes from time to time based on, on new emerging evidence. And the uh, prostatectomists are very au fait with that first step in penile rehabilitation. So if a patient comes in, see them before surgery, they know what the patient is supposed to be told to do in the immediate stages after surgery. They also know that I want to see the patient no later than six weeks after surgery so we can start the whole second phase of penile rehabilitation. Uh, it's been more difficult to get our radiation oncologists to do the same thing, but I have to say in fairness to them, the four major prostate radiation oncologists housed at main campus at Memorial Sloan Kettering are now very good at getting people over to see us. Recently, you published some data for the first time regarding the differences in outcomes of patients. Can you tell us a little more about this study? So that study was done on a data set from my time with uh, Bob Flanagan uh, at Loyola University in Chicago. And so we took men who uh, enrolled in rehab. It was not a randomized control trial, but we took the men who committed to doing rehab and we looked at time to starting rehab as a predictor of long-term outcomes. And what we showed that if you chose a time point of six months, before or after six months, that those men who commenced rehab more than six months after surgery had poorer outcomes than men who started before six months. And so the concept again goes hand in hand with what I said earlier on, that structural changes in erectile tissue and the development of venous leak is a time-dependent phenomenon. And the earlier we start rehab, the more likely we are to have a positive outcome. 
What percentage of patients do you believe are undergoing appropriate penile rehabilitation outside the major medical centers? So I think uh, the operative word that you use there is appropriate. We don't know what the appropriate is. We have a protocol in place and we follow it. It's based on science, but I would not say that it is definitively the optimal way to do it. 87% of urologists and sexual medicine physicians in responding to two surveys that we did do some form of penile rehab, generally pill-based, Viagra, Levitra, and Cialis-based. So I think the majority of physicians are interested in the concept. The problem is this. Now, penile rehabilitation is a labor, a space, and an energy sapping and intensive process. And the average physician in the community, and many physicians even in academic medicine, trouble. They have trouble structuring it because they don't have the staff, they don't have the space or the time to make it work. We have the luxury at Memorial Sloan Kettering of having two nurses who work with me, a fellow and myself. And so we have 3,000 patients actively involved in injection therapy at any one time in our program. And that's because we have the resources to support these patients. Support, I talked about institutional support and support um, networks within a practice. They're vitally important to the success and viability of a penile rehab program. Many patients and their partners mention your book, Saving Your Sex Life, A Guide for Men with Prostate Cancer. What have you learned since you published that book that the average patient needs to be aware of? The book was published about 12 months ago, Saving Your Sex Life, A Guide for Men with Prostate Cancer. It was really a labor of love, and it was born out of the fact that patients would come in to see me and say, I wish there was something I could have read before I had treatment. There's not been a lot of data that is uh, earth-shattering that's come out in the last 12 months. The plan is to start the second edition next year with a view to it being published in 2011. I imagine it will be an expanded edition with more diagrams and more tables, etc. I think by the time it gets published, we'll have some more information. We'll have data from the neuromodulatory drug trials. We'll have data from our radiation rehabilitation study. So I think we will have new data in a couple of years. But at this point in time, I think the book is very representative of how we look at and how we treat patients with sexual dysfunction after prostate cancer therapy. What, in your opinion, is the most important message for prostate cancer patients and their partners today? I think the most important message for, for the prostate cancer patient or his partner who's looking at this video is that you need to be proactive. You need to go out, get the information, raise the sexual issues with your doctor, select your doctor carefully, be proactive. That is how you're going to get the best sexual function outcomes after your treatment, irrespective of whether it's surgery, radiation, or hormone therapy.